Hey, what's up guys, it's Tyler here from Fable, and today I'm gonna to be diving into a little bit of Michael Burry since the internet seems to have a huge love fest about the guy, talking about how ETFs are gonna crash, everyone's searching about what he's up to, and I got quite the treat for you because I'm gonna talk about what this guy's actually investing in. So he's saying that ETFs are gonna crash, but where is his money at? And that's what I'm gonna get into in today's video. But first, before we do that, please hit that subscribe button, that hit that thumbs up, that helps us a ton on the YouTube algo, and then leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about his position now let's get into it. All right, so instead of spreading a bunch of FUD about passive investing and ETFs and spreading all this doubt about that and it's gonna crash, it's gonna be like the big short all over again, Burry's actually been putting his money behind a few activist plays and none other than the resident value expert at MacroOps, our newest guy in the team, Brandon, he's been writing about this in his awesome Value Hive letter, which by the way, if you have not seen that, go to MacroOps.com and click on Value Hive and sign up for that because it's completely free and he's been absolutely crushing it lately with the content. So let's get over to that. Now here's the Value Hive that Brandon put out a few weeks ago and the investor spotlight for that edition actually went out to Michael Burry. And so essentially what Brandon's been telling us is that he has been doing two activist plays and he's going in on GameStop and Tailored Brands. And so these stocks are both sitting at all time lows both companies have high cash balances and many investors think that this is a value trap. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to swoop in and have these companies actually buy back their stock. And so what his beef is, is he's isn't really thrilled with how TLRD has been allocating their capital over the last you know 10 years or so. And so he said, you know, guys, just do a buyback and reward the shareholders that way because you guys haven't been allocating capital correctly within the company. So why don't you just give it to the shareholders directly. And just so you guys don't know what TLRD is, I'm gonna go into a little background on them. That's a tailored brands. And really you guys probably know about them through Men's Warehouse or Joseph A. Bank. And so Men's Warehouse is this huge suit company. You know, you go in and it's basically like a suit superstore for men and they have all these dress clothes for males. And that's what tailored brands is. And if we go over to their chart here on TradingView, you can see that the thing's trading at 454, just got an absolutely freaking crush from you know basically mid 2018 all the way down to here. And so Burry's trying to go in and do something interesting. He's trying to buy it on the cheap and then convince management to execute a stock buyback, which should make the stock go up. So in case you don't really know how a buyback works, I'm gonna go to an article here and go through it with you guys. So a buyback is also known as a share repurchase, and it's just when a company buys its own outstanding shares to reduce the number of shares available on the open market. And they do it for a number of reasons. They want to reduce the supply or prevent other shareholders from a controlling stake. But generally what it does is it rewards the investors in the company. And so what they do is they usually just go into the open market over an extended period of time and they have outlined a share repurchase program, they slowly buy. And since all of that buying pressure is in the market, the stock price also goes up. Now, another key thing to understand about this is because they're buying back stock, they're taking supply out of the market which means that if you do own stock still, then the earnings per share goes up on your share because there's just less shares around in the company. So they do a few things, is it reduces the number of shares of outstanding, it inflates earnings per share, and often the value of the stock. And so it demonstrates to investors the business has sufficient cash set aside for emergencies and a low probability of economic troubles, or in this case, which I think what Burry's getting at, is it's representative of the fact that, hey, they don't really know what to do with their business plan right now, but they do have cash, so let's just go ahead and reward it to the shareholders. And so this, these letters that uh, Brandon linked out in Value Hive, this is what he's been saying here. And you can read the exact, if you go to the Value Hive newsletter, you can see the exact letter that he sent out to the board and you can read through it. And essentially, you know, he, he's saying this in a semi-complex way, but he's saying, hey guys, do a $50 million share buyback and you know, reward the shareholders that way. You guys haven't really been doing well lately because the stock's at quarter century lows and management, you know, you don't really know what you're doing. So why don't you just give that cash back to investors? So that's Burry's number one activist play. Now his next one is a virtually the same play. And if we go back to the Value Hive article and Brandon says it looks like a duck. So he also seeks a more aggressive buyback from GME, GameStop, to the tune of 238 million. And so if Burry does get his way and the board accepts his proposal, and 80% of GME's outstanding stock would be retired. And management's already said they'd purchase stock up to six or share, so current prices of four still appear cheap. So if we go, let's look at GME real quick. You know, Burry's been loading up down here in the threes and the fours, and he's 
you know, saying, hey, why don't we buy this stock back up to six? You guys have been doing horrible lately. The business is essentially failing. It's gone from 60 down to four. And, you know, this is a, a penny stock now. But what's interesting is if Burry buys at four, let's say he has an average cost of four and it goes up to six, that's a 50% gain. That could be very, very fast. So you can see why Burry's doing this and it can be very, very lucrative for him and his fund. And then again, in that Value Hive article, if you go back, it links out to the same letter, same type of letter that Burry sent out to GameStop for a buyback of 238 million. And you guys can go through and read it. It's just the very nitty gritty and the specifics, his exact letter to the board. He's just essentially saying, hey, we own a bunch of shares. We want you guys to buy back with the cash on hand because you guys haven't really been doing that well. And that is a way to reward shareholders and increase shareholder value. And that's essentially what this business wire press release said. Now, another thing that I want to point out is the following week, Brandon put out the next edition of Value Hive, and he actually found that Burry increased his position in TLRD. And that means he's really doubling down on this strategy and he thinks that they are going to buy back the stock. And so if we go to the next Value Hive edition, again, if you guys want this, just go to macrops.com, click on Value Hive up here at the top. You'll be able to get this directly to your inbox. He filed a 13D, which means that he's taking an extremely large percentage for an individual investor in this company. And so he's putting uh, his money where his mouth is on this one and increase, increasing his position size and really thinks that he's going to do that. So that's what Burry is doing right now, guys, in the market. He is going in as an activist. He's buying these companies that have been doing horrible and then telling the boards to say, hey, you guys have all this cash on hand. Your businesses are failing. You should use it to buy back the stock instead. And one thing I noticed is that if you think about these two businesses, you know, they're both old relics that are probably going to be going out of business. They probably won't be around that much longer because if you think about it, men's warehouse, right? They're selling suits. I can't even remember the last time I saw someone wear a suit around Austin. You know, even the lawyers here, they're wearing cowboy, you know, cowboy boots and jeans and cowboy hats. And I wear a white T-shirt every day to work. You know, it's just that part of the culture is kind of gone. And even I bankers in, in New York and stuff, they've been getting more casual dress codes. So it, it makes sense to me why men's warehouse has been a failing business. And I think what Burry's trying to do here is take advantage of this little paradigm shift in the fashion industry and get in on the cheap, have them do a repurchase, then sell it. I don't think he's going to be in this company for the long haul. And the same thing's true for GameStop. I mean, think about it where we are with video games now, right? Everyone's on Fortnite and PUBG and all these streaming games. No one's buying consoles and, and buying, you know, trading in their old video games for new ones like we all used to do in the late 90s and early 2000s. I remember when I was a kid, I was super excited to go to GameStop because I could, you know, trade in my games and then I get enough money to buy another game. But that's just really not happening anymore, right? Like, when's the last time you've heard anyone doing that? And that's also reflected in GameStop's stock price. The thing's absolutely plummeted. So I think Burry sees that both these industries are kind of dying. You know, no business lasts forever, guys. I mean, that's that's just the reality of, of economics. And so I think he's seen that these guys, these dinosaurs at the end of their cycle, but they do have a lot of cash on hand right now. And he's encouraging management to take that cash. And instead of trying to invest and trying to turn the business around and create this new strategy, you know, just re reward shareholders now and perhaps think about winding the company down. You know, not you don't have to run a company until it goes bankrupt. Right. So anyway, guys, I hope that was informative for you guys. And you learned a little bit about what Michael Burry is actually doing. He's not just spreading a bunch of fear, uncertainty and doubt about the passive ETF bomb, although that's what gets the headlines. He's actually doing some really interesting investment strategies. And if you want to keep following him and tracking him, definitely go to Macro Ops and click on that Value Hive thing and sign up. I've really been liking what Brand's been putting out, and I think you guys will too. So if you like this video, give me that thumbs up, hit that sub button, leave a comment below. What do you guys think about this Michael Burry play? Do you have any questions about this strategy? Let me know, guys, and thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next video.